Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I will announce them in the order they are on stage from left to right. Ladies and gentlemen, David Linhart. Mark Harmon. And up, David. Mike Rowe. And Mr. Bruce Spencer. The 77s, ladies and gentlemen. And if you uh, missed their show last night on the gallery stage, the uh, abbreviated version, then you certainly missed a fine one, no doubt about it. Brand new album out, fresh off the press, this Holy Ghost building. Mike, this thing was a long time in the making, was it not? Well, a couple years, sort of. I mean, we did the basic tracks in three days, but then it took a couple years over W. <laughs> you got the inspiration for this album about the same time you were doing Seven and Seven Is. Uh, Fun with Sound? No, 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 that was a couple years before that. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, Bruce is uh, drumming with Jackie Green, some of you might be familiar with. And he was on tour and called me and said, I'm really getting into this music, we should do a gospel record. We should get some old songs, and some old blues stuff, and just, uh, just do it, you know. Try something different. So I went and I... Uh, um, I went through my collection and I had a friend who had a lot of, he was a real collector of old gospel and blues records all the way back to the 1920s. And I, I, I listened to hundreds of songs and uh, filtered through them, tried to pick ones that moved me lyrically and musically that had something special about them. And then we booked a studio for three days. We all set up and it was like a large kind of about almost as large as this tent. And we, we set up live, and we had a couple of different workstations where Bruce had one drum set in one side of the room, one on the other side. And uh, the, uh, the methodology was, I just, none of the guys had heard the songs except for me. And I, I had them all on tapes. So we went to the other side of the studio, I said, all right, check this one out. And I press play, listen to it. No, nah, nah, let's do another one. Press play. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's do that. All right. Went to the other side of the room, picked up our instruments. Bruce counted it off. We played it through. No rehearsal, no knowledge of the tune or the changes. Uh, you know, we ran it down a couple times. And when we got one we liked, we moved on. We did that for three days. And we had about 10 songs. 10 tracks or 11 tracks. In the middle of that, there was an original one that we composed on the spot just to take a break. And some of the ones that we ended up using were ones that were just warm ups just to check the instruments and make sure the levels were good. So then, when that was done, uh, a few months later, uh, we went back in and did the electric guitars and I added to the guitar that I played that day. And then, uh, Several months later, about a year later, we did the vocals. And then about 18 months after that, we, we did the background vocals, and then we mixed it, and that's it. And I'm sure all this was amidst uh, of the tour with Mr. Pretzel, correct? No? Was it after? I suppose I toured in there somewhere, yeah. We all have been touring, working. You know, we're all trying to make a living doing music, and that's, you know, that's difficult sometimes. So if you're... Uh, you know, unless you have a record company who's giving you a million billion dollars to do all this. Basically, you have to do your own records on your own time. So we did it as we had time to do it. But I'm glad we did because we had a lot of time to work on it and really listen to it. And what's really cool is that after two years, it still held up. We still really liked it. So that's when we knew we had something good. I'm certainly enjoying the album. Uh, how long did it take? How many tracks, total, total tracks did you go through before you narrowed it down to the tracks that you got. How many total songs did you have selected? Well, we didn't record any more than once before. We used everything we recorded. You, well, yeah, but how many did you sample before you actually determined, yeah, we're doing this? I don't remember. I don't think it was that many. I probably yeah. brought in like 30 or 40. I think we just threw out a couple, though. So there were about 20 throwaways then. You no, know, we, were, we were eager to get on them, so. Mike showed us a couple that we didn't like and throw them out of the way, but pretty much we, we were determined yeah, to do whatever we had in front of us. We picked the Allison Krauss tune, that was cool. Uh, 
mm-hmm. you know, a couple uh, Carter family, Bill Monroe, uh, and the blues guys are like Blind Willie Johnson, Mississippi Fred McDowell, Skip James, uh, Lester Collateral Scruggs got in, and uh, Oh yeah, remember Gary Davis got in. Do you feel like you took a lot of liberties on the album from uh, the way they were originally written? Some of them, yeah, but uh, some of them we stayed true to, I felt, at least kind of a rock and roll version of what it would have been. So uh, yeah, a few of them were radical revisionist type jobs, but then some of the other ones, we just played them straight. You know, we didn't try to make it fancy. It's like the, the, the deal was the three of us had to sound good doing it. You know, as a rockabilly kind of trio thing. But they're pretty true to what happened in the room. That's that record. Let's uh, let's shift gears a little bit. I want to ask you guys about the Strawman. Is there anything in the future from them? We all well, talk about the Strawman a lot. I'll let, Dave, I'll let Dave answer that. Well, we we've actually been writing songs for at least the last couple of years, and we probably have I don't know five, six, seven of them in the can already that that need some arrangement work. But I mean, there's definitely a future. It's just a matter of getting this all in the same spot at the same time. Um, the last version was done kind of similar to the, the last seventh record where it had to be done over a long space of time and i personally would like to do it in a single moment you know when we're all looking at each other in the same room so i'd really like to hold out until we can actually do that and uh mark brother bill is uh, participating correct still yeah nice answer <laughs> <laughs> no he's still writing lyrics you know he's up in portland and uh dave's in atlanta Hello. Can you hear me now? Public speaking. I think somebody played with my EQ is what the problem is with your microphone, Mark. Yeah, it sounds like it's a tin can. Yeah, you sound like you're in a tin can. I'll try to work at that at the same time I'm talking. Bruce, what do you got going on besides the sevens? Well, Dan, everybody. <laughs> Simmons have always meant a great deal to me. It's really hard to talk about anything else, especially here. This is about the, I think what, Mike, we came to the second cornerstone, the first cornerstone? We've been coming yeah, here for I was at 20 the first. years. I, I think Bruce was at the second one. Yeah, yeah. So but, we've, okay. but I'm, I'm busy touring it's, uh, and recording with Jackie Green, a guy on, on uh, 429. He's a, he's a uh, Americana artist. He's doing pretty good. You might see him around. Um, just did Conan O'Brien a couple weeks ago, and we're trying to climb the ladder, you know. And uh, Mark and I are busy producing stuff in the studio we have, and we just produced a record for uh, for this guy Jimmy Taylor. Jimmy Taylor and the Prophets is a band that we are in together. He's a blues guy. Got Tower Power Horns guys on it, and a bunch of different people. It's pretty cool. We're working that up in the region, West Coast. And uh, Mark and I are really busy doing uh, another project that I'm the lead singer on. Mark's the composer, and that's pretty cool. So we're gonna we're gonna try to we're gonna kind of uh, present our, our little label here by the end of the year. We got a we got a few projects on it, so that's that's what we have. Do you have a name in the working? Uh, yeah, right now we we're calling it MB7 Music. MB7. MB7. That's that's our label, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we'll be, you know, if you're interested in keeping tabs on us, we'll we'll, we'll make a way to connect to it from the web. And we're pretty excited. We've been really working a lot. We we've, we've got a, a bunch of really developed music. And it's uh, very exciting for us. I, I tried to make them call it idiots of the world, but they wouldn't. <laughs> they felt that wasn't good. Couldn't wouldn't make good copy. Got a Ross regular fool. Yeah, the fools the fools thing has been a really good thing for us. It's kind of pretty much served the, the Christian community with the records we've been doing, and and we kind of find it necessary right now to kind of create another entity that is that is independent of that and kind of arises, you know, uh, with some distribution and some things that are out in, out in the uh, 
secular general public stuff too. Real quick, one more question. That's one for you, Mark. How do you juggle your schedules? Uh, I don't. I don't sleep. Yeah, Mark's Mark's a manager of a test lab at HP. I mean, the guy's got a real career here. He's a he's a genius, actually. But I'm not a rocket scientist. Yes, he he's a real he's a legit individual. But he just bought a Mac. Yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna get me in trouble. I know. Now, we're we're, we're, we're crossing the, the line now. I follow in the footsteps of the, the great starving artists like my idol Mike Rowe. So, I have a Mac. No, no, but I starve. It's like oh, yeah, I starve, but I have a Mac. Yeah, there you go. You guys are playing main stage tonight. What can we anticipate? Uh, three songs we didn't do. 15, 15 minutes. 15 of minutes of high-powered. Energy. Moment. Yeah, scream rock, scream out. <laughs> Mike's really been working on his guttural, you know. God. Oh, God. That's a curse. You guys have a career ahead of you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Lenhart, Mark Herman, Mike Rowe, and Mr. Bruce Hancock at 77. Thanks for joining us, guys. Terry and Gary, please make your way to the stage. It's time for the Lost Dogs.